I'm Terrence James, and you're watching another episode of Neutral Reviews, where we do real reviews for real decisions. And today, we are looking at the 2023 Honda HRV EXL, and I have borrowed the keys for this vehicle from Westgate Honda in London, Ontario, who is run by enthusiasts, have a great sales team, and who also offer some of the most well thought out and engineered vehicles on the road today, including this one. Now, the HRV used to always be built on the same platform as the Honda Fit, but for this all new third generation, Honda has raised the bar and took this once little CUV and put it on the much more advanced, larger platform of the new Honda Civic, which means you also get that new, more modern interior out of the Civic. But what it doesn't mean is that you still get those beloved magic seats. And that's because progress comes at a price. And what you also don't get is that new corporate front end of the Civic. And that's because Honda expects that CUV buyers here in North America are looking for something European. And Honda is also expecting a generation of Civic buyers looking for a little bit more practicality, but who aren't willing to compromise that great ride quality and premium feel that they're used to. So we take a look at the facts, feels, and final thoughts of the 2023 Honda HRV to see if it is the more practical Honda Civic you're looking for. Let's take a look. Now the HRV is Honda's entry level SUV. It's actually only a couple thousand dollars more than that entry level Honda Civic and a couple thousand dollars less than the Honda Civic hatchback. Now it comes in four different trims in Canada, starting off with a base LX that's going to be front wheel drive only. That starts off around $28,730 Canadian plus fees and taxes. Then you get all the way up to around $37,130 Canadian plus fees and taxes for something like this top level EXL. Now all models in Canada come with uh, LED lights and wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But if you want the upgraded sunroof, you're going to have to get those two top level trims. And if you want built in navigation, you're going to have to go all the way up to the EXL Navi here. Now, they gave you a bigger, badder HRV this year. So let's talk competition. Now, as we always say, that's a long list every time that we're looking at any SUV or CUV, and that is because there is so many in that sea of SUV, but most likely you're looking at the MX-30, the Toyota Corolla Cross, or the Hyundai Kona. Now, that Mazda CX-30 is going to be a little bit cheaper, but also give you a cheaper rear suspension, so it's not going to ride quite as well, but it's going to give you standard all-wheel drive, give you an extra optional engine for more power, and no CVT. And when we're talking about no CVT, that's the same with that Toyota Corolla Cross. However, they don't give you a more powerful engine, but they do give you really good fuel economy. Now, when we're looking at the Hyundai, it's going to be the cheapest, but it's also going to be the smallest. Will give you an extra optional engine for power, but unfortunately, like the Honda, be CFT only. And that is because Honda's concentration was not on the powertrain, but on the drivability of this vehicle. So let's talk performance. And the HRV uses Honda's 2 liter inline 4 VTEC engine, producing 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque, which is capable of rocketing this 3300 pound Ray Civic from 0 to 60 in around 9 seconds. And you're looking at around a 53 liter gas tank and around 27 miles per gallon combined, which is okay for the segment. Now, all that power runs through that CVT transmission that we we're talking about. And the reason why they use that is because it is great for daily driving, it's a little bit more reliable and efficient. Now, all that power keeps running through. Honda's real-time all-wheel drive system with intelligent control and it's a great all-wheel drive system for normal everyday conditions. Now we have to steer so it uses electronic steering power assisted like most cars nowadays to fit all of those safety features which Honda gives you a lot across the board and we have to steer also these wheels and they have surprisingly small 17 inch wheels across all uh, trims which nowadays is pretty small but they are nice looking especially on this EXL and they come with 215 60 R17 all season tires on here. Now, brakes, we got to stop. It's got two piston in the front and one piston brake calipers in the rear with about 12 inch vented discs all the way around and suspension. It uses McPherson strut in the front and multi-link in the rear, again, which is great for manufacturing without sacrificing that great ride quality that you're used to. Now, all this has to attach to a chassis, so let's talk chassis. And it uses the Honda Civic's 11th generation platform, which is known for being incredibly strong. And it is a front wheel drive setup in the front, and it is two plus three configuration for seats. Now, you're looking at about 104 and a half inch wheelbase, which is good for the segment. And it is, can also do around 0.8 Gs around the skid pad, which isn't great, but in line with everyone else. Now, when we come back here, I don't see any real exhaust, but I know it has some, and it sounds like this. Now, 
When this is properly equipped, you can tow up to 1,500 pounds with your HRV, which is the equivalent to one of these active urban lifestyles hanging off the back of your HRV. So let's talk cargo. And the HRV actually has a fair amount of space for the vehicle in this segment, and that's because of that long wheelbase. So you're looking here at around 23 cubic feet with those seats up, and you can over double that when the seats are down at around 55 cubic feet. And underneath here, you also have more storage that can be organized underneath there to make things a little bit more convenient. Of course, you have some tie downs, things like that, and you even have a 12 volt. Uh, plug-in. Now what you don't have is a power lift gate, but you don't see that very often in this subcompact uh, CUV segment. But most importantly, can it do a Canadian cargo test? Here we go. Because in Canada, you never know when a game of road hockey will break out and you want to make sure that your stick fits. So here we go. Stick fits in there just nice. Now, if you're Zidane Ochara, maybe not, but for most people and their kids, uh, the hockey bags and hockey sticks are gonna fit in there just fine, especially with the nice 60-40 split seats. So when we're talking back seats, let's see how the people fare back there. Now when we come to the back of the HRV, there's not a lot going on back here. You don't have any air conditioning uh, back here or any extra vents. You don't even have any cup holders back here uh, or even any plugs to plug your stuff in. And the seats don't recline, but the seats are actually very, very comfortable. And at this price point, you're really just looking to get to A from A to B comfortably. And as you can see back here, I'm only five foot seven, so keep that in mind. And I always make the joke that I'm a five foot nine driver because I like to stay away from that steering wheel. So as you can see, there is tons and tons of space, especially for the segment. And because of the angles of the seat, I really have a fair amount of headroom. And if there's only two adults back here, you got a fair amount of elbow room as well. So it's not bad back here. And the main thing is you have lots of space. And that, as we said, is the main thing. So let's take a look up front. Well, we're talking front seats of the HRV, very similar to the back in the sense that you have a fair amount of space for this segment. As we said, I'm around a five foot nine driver, even though I'm five foot seven. So as you can see in here, again, we have lots and lots of space for this uh, segment. Uh, these seats are very comfortable. Surprisingly, they're manual at this uh, trim level, but I'm pretty sure that I read that you can get power, six way power on this side and four way power on that side. But the seats work really, really well. Um, they feel great. They're firm, but not too firm. You have a nice feel to keep you upright. They're really, really nice seats. We come over the steering wheel, excellent looking steering wheel, again, out of that Civic. And it's heated on here with a nice button there. And you got push button controls, both for your uh, safety systems over here and your uh, infotainment, your radio and things like that. It is manually telescopic and tilting, so you have lots of adjustment there. Now, when we come over here, the automatic transmission has a nice mechanical shift lever on there, which is nice nowadays. And we keep coming down, you got the drive mode button here. And there's just three sensible drive modes on this. You have eco, snow, and normal. That's really all that you need. And you have nowadays your electronic parking brake. And when we come down here, what's a little bit different than the Civic is you got a little bit more space, as you can see down here. And you've got two more USB ports that you can plug things in. And of course, at this level, the EXL, you do have the wireless charging pad here, which is nice, which also gives you wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And you've got one more USB uh, plug in there. Now, when we're staying here in the middle console, you got a fair amount of room. It's nice and deep in there, as you can see. You got these two cup holders here and tons of space in the glove compartment for a smaller car. Now, the door pockets on the back, which we didn't discuss, or on the front here, do have a couple different spots that you can put things, including water bottles, but they do look a little on the small side. Now, when we come up to the heating and ventilation, I like the fact that they do have these tactile buttons that feel good when you're twisting them around and still hard buttons. And when we come up to the navigation, this vehicle has it. I should say this level of trim has it with the EXL, but you're also going to get that nicer nine inch screen. And when we're talking screen as well, when we come over here, I love the digital cockpit on this because it's kind of tricky. It's digital on the left side, but on the right side, it's analog. But to look at it, it really does look fully digital. It's really interesting that the way that they did that. Now, this vehicle, as we said, really tried to keep the driving characteristics of the Civic, and that's the most important. So let's take this for a drive and see how it feels. Okay, here's where we do our quick turnaround test like we forgot some of the hockey equipment at home. So here we go. Now, being on the Civic platform, hopefully it shouldn't be too bad to uh, do a multi-point turn here. And as you can see, the steering's pretty light, and that wasn't too bad. 
Okay, here's where we're doing a quick backup test just to make sure this thing's not too much of a nightmare to back up when we're in a hurry. So here we go. Got it in reverse, obviously. And as we go, you can see that all models here have these multi uh, backup camera angles. And this one has diam dynamic lines. And yeah, it's fairly easy and intuitive to use and to park. And uh, yeah, that was good. All right, here's where we do our traffic light Grand Prix acceleration test like we're late for practice. So here we go. Now there is no sport mode or anything like this. So we're just gonna left foot on the brake, right foot on the gas and away we go. That's wild, not fast. Well, that CVT is pretty smooth. Uh, it's kind of like an electric car in that way, but uh, that was, uh, that was well, we're not gonna win too many races. Similarly, here's where we do our emergency style braking type test. So here we go. controlled stop not too bad when we're talking styling of the all-new HRV I quite like it now granted it doesn't quite fit the mold of you know your corporate Hondas right now with the CRV and your pilot and your Civic and things like that however uh, it is a very unique look on the road aside from the Ford Escape, because <laughs> it does look a lot like the Ford Escape, but I think the point is the Ford Escape is uh, successful worldwide, and this vehicle here has a very similar look, which has a very good global appeal and a very European look. Um, and when we come in here, when we talk styling, this is corporate new Honda with that Civic uh, type interior, which follows suit with the other new Honda vehicles that are coming out. And I really like this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, this vent here uh, across there. I think it looks really really sporty and in person it looks good it doesn't look cheap at all I um, mean you move the vents with these things uh, in here as far as side to side to move that around um, and as we said before you know you still have your hard buttons down here for most things including your heating and ventilation which is nice nowadays um, and everything when we're talking about the feels all these buttons and stuff feel really really good Honda's always good about the switch gear and things like that um, yeah uh, can't really complain in here, especially at the price point. Um, one of the things that we said that Honda Civic owners like is a good ride quality and a premium feel. And again, I've been uh, lucky enough to be in a lot of really expensive vehicles lately. So is this the same as some of these? No, it's not. But again, when you're looking at around the $30,000 mark, very, very nice. Uh, a lot of soft touches in here. You do have this leather or leather looking material with the perforated seats, uh, which I quite like. And, and again, as we said, this vent is nice. All the buttons look really good and expensive. Uh, the steering wheel that you hold on to all the time, again, looks like uh, very modern and something out of the Civic. I haven't been in a new Civic yet. I've peered in. Uh, it looks similar. Um, but again, you do have some cheaper materials in here for sure. But again, you know, this is more of an entry level type vehicle, at least getting into the CUV or SUV market for Honda. Um, and as you can see in the back, as we were mentioning before, lots and lots of room back there for this vehicle size one of the things with the Honda Civic uh, that this that is built on that platform there's tons and tons of space like the Honda Civic is very big compared to your other competition uh, against the Civic so in here again you're gonna have a lot of room in back there and as you can see there's a lot of greenhouse space not a lot going on back there uh, but it is comfortable now one thing that the kids might not like or adults as you can see is you can only put that window down part way which is a little irritating but again it's built more on a small car platform so a lot of times those windows don't go all the way down in the back um, as we showed tons of space there for cargo really usable every day not quite like the Germans with a lot of the extra hooks and and tie downs and stuff but plenty there and as we were showing before you do have that extra storage back there uh, that you can put stuff in underneath which is really nice and handy to keep things organized really smart especially with a smaller space to use as much space as you can um, what else to say when we're up here is again great visibility and again it's a small car platform as you can see tons of greenhouse space you do feel 
pretty nice in here. There's a little elbow room for a smaller car. Uh, but yeah, Hondas are always great for having good visibility. You have this moon roof, which is nice in this trim or the one below this as well. Um, and as you can see, you know, we tons of storage in here. You've got good uh, in the glove compartment, as we were showing. You've got in here, you've got lots of space that's really usable underneath here. Again, you've got um, different plugs in plugins. Now the people in the back don't have any plugins, but again, in a smaller car like this, I guess, you know, if you're in a pinch, you could just plug it in for them up here and either get a longer cord or they might just have to wait. But all in all, this is a really nice place to be. And again, especially at this price point, how does it handle? Well, again, to be fair, I haven't driven a new Honda Civic, but I have driven lots of Honda Civics before, and this feels very, very similar. Um, it's just a nice place to be. It does sit up a little higher than the Civic, but not too much uh, in the sense of you still feel nice. You can put this seat relatively low or you can put it up nice and high if that's what you like with an SUV or CUV. But the actual steering feel itself, it's a little light. Uh, but again, this isn't a race car and this isn't a Honda Civic Type R. It's a nice feeling steering wheel in the hand, like the physical steering wheel, but the actual movement itself does feel a little... I don't know, it, it, it's not super precise uh, or um, quick. However, again, I'm, I'm not complaining, it does the trick. And it, when you're talking about how does this feel when you're driving, again, it does feel just like a lifted car. Uh, not a ton of body roll, uh, it's fairly quiet, it's definitely zippy enough when you're in town. I was, you know, we were making fun of it a little bit on that acceleration test. And no, you're not going to win any races, but to honestly, just to get away from stoplights with the CVT uh, and a little low end power, it's fine. It does feel fairly zippy uh, when you're just trying to keep up with traffic. Same thing when you're getting onto the highway, you want to give yourself some time. Uh, and again, you're not going to want to pass a huge lineup of cars. Not that you should anyway. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it is a little down on power. But as we said in the competition uh, portion, it's really on par with everyone else in this segment. They do offer some more powerful engine choices, a few of those, uh, like the Mazda, for instance, and the Hyundai. However, uh, aside from that Kona N, you're still going to be underpowered. Uh, so I understand why Honda did what they did here, and the Honda engines are known for reliability. You do have that VTEC, um, and it's relatively good on fuel. Uh, not the best in the class, but definitely not the worst. It's, you know, not bad at all. Uh, and as we said, we don't really often get too much into the music here, and I don't think you will either since this doesn't have a premium sound system, but in the Navi or the EXL version that we have here, you do get the upgraded uh, eight eight speaker system. It starts off with four speaker and goes up to six and then you have this eight here. It sounds fine. I mean, if you're just listening to normal stuff, nowadays most of these stereos are, are pretty apt. They're okay. Um, and the only other thing we wanted to say, just give a little Nutri Reviews subscription shout out and we get a little Honda horn there for you, which leads me to my final thoughts. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, and check out one of our other small SUV reviews so we can get more cool cars like this one and our upcoming review of a 2022 Subaru BRZ. Now, we started off this review by looking to see if the all-new 2023 Honda HRV was a more practical Honda Civic you were looking for. And here are the facts and feels that we used to come up with this final thought. Which is, if you're coming out of a Honda Civic and looking for a little bit more practicality, but are scared of losing that great ride quality and premium feel that you're used to, don't be. Because Honda has hit the mark with this all new 2023 HRV. Yes, you're gonna lose out on those beloved magic seats, but the raised Civic that you get in return is well worth the compromise. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.